bedroom Recording you're in? in progress. Uh, actually, it's my son's, but it wasn't pink like this then. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Mom, you made it home from your trip? Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yes yesterday <laughs> afternoon. Good. Oh, good. Glad you made it safe. Hi, Rips. All right, my friends. Let's do it. I'm going to mute you guys. Hi, Christine. Hi, Jill. Okay, I'm muting everybody. And then we'll just go ahead and get started. So feel free to play your music or anything you need to do or want to do on your end. We will not hear it. All right. Go ahead and come to your mat. Come here, baby. Come here, honey. Come here. All right, so just like always, take a moment to settle in. So just moving around a little bit, maybe rolling your shoulders out, rolling your head around, and giving your dog some little pets or some little loves. I love this girl so much. All right, and then eventually just settle into stillness. So as you're ready, just closing your eyes and finding your most comfortable seat. And then sit up nice and tall and take a moment this morning to just simply observe. So not doing anything, not going anywhere, not even thinking about what you need to do today or after this class is over, but just allowing yourself to fully be in this moment, be right here, right now. Notice how your body feels. Notice how your breath feels inside your body. So let's take one great big huge inhale, hold at the top. So one, this is all you get, make it good. When you think you're full, see if you can even sip in just a little bit more. And open mouth sigh, let it go. <sighs> All right, seal your lips and let's find our ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose with a gentle constriction in the back of your throat. And then once you have kind of tapped into your ujjayi, no rush, you can either start to move from your seat. So it might feel good to just start with little movements from your seat little exploration of your neck or your shoulders, your spine. But eventually we're going to take our ujjayi breath with us and come forward to hands and knees. So please don't feel rushed at all, but eventually find your way onto your hands and your knees, your tabletop position. And then just start to move like we always do. However feels good to you. Little hip circles, big hip circles, cat cows, child's pose. This is my favorite thing in the morning. I think in the morning it feels especially good because there's all those little tight places that we slept on. So start to really just wake up all parts of your body. Start to feel into all those little tiny spaces, those spaces that we don't even notice in our average everyday life. But here on our yoga mats, we definitely notice that we feel into those tight spaces and we start to create more space there. So use your breath, use your awareness of your body. Let's take about three to five more rounds. Just feeling it out. And then as you feel complete with this intuitive movement, no rush, <clears throat> eventually downward facing dog is where we will end up. So find your way back to your down dog in your own time and even in your own way. If you wanna move through a vinyasa, 
You want to hover your knees for a moment. And then once you are back in down dog, so no hurry at all, but we'll do basically the same thing. Just move around a little bit, pedal out your heels, shift your hips around. Maybe notice what does it feel like to take your feet out nice and wide? What does it feel like to widen through your hands just a little bit? So in your down dog, don't worry about getting your legs straight or your heels flat on the ground. Focus on lengthening through your spine from your fingertips all the way up to your sit bones. Lengthen through your side bodies as well. Even lengthen the space underneath your armpits. So we're tuning in and really noticing and then making little tiny adjustments to create more efficiency in our body, to breathe bigger, to loosen up those tight places or soften those hard edges. Let's take one more great big breath into our down dog. And then as you exhale, just crawl your hands or at the end of your exhale, either way, just crawl your hands to the back of your mat until you find yourself in a forward fold at the back of your yoga mat. So feet about hips width distance apart, or you can take them out just a little wider. Make sure all of your toes are facing directly forward. Now on an in breath, let's come to a halfway lift position. So spine really, really long, and then bend your left knee a lot. Bring your left fingertips to the ground or left hand to a block. Reach your right arm to the sky, twist. So reach up like you want to touch the ceiling with your right fingertips. Keep your right leg as straight as you can. Root down into the inner edge of your right foot and see if you can pull your right hip back just a little bit more. Take one more great big breath. And of your exhale, let's slowly unwind. So right knee bends a lot, right fingertips on the ground. And then left arm to the sky for your twist. Left leg as straight as it will go. So stay rooted through the big toe mound of your left foot. And then pull your left hip back. Reach up through your left fingertips. Maybe even gaze up. And then can you feel your breath move all the way down to your belly. Last round. And of your exhale. Let it go. Unwind. Let's take a nice easy ragdoll pose for just a moment. So either grab opposite elbows, or if you'd rather, you can bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, give the back of your neck some nice traction. So maybe a little sway or a little bob. Try to keep your weight forward so you're not rocking back into your heels. Lift your sit bones up using the strength in your core so we're still connected to our centers. Next time you breathe in, let's Come back to that halfway lift position and just gaze out in front of you. You're going to crawl your hands forward. So bring your hands to the ground and start to crawl your hands forward until you're in a plank position. So top of a push up, shoulders over wrists, hips level with shoulders. Inhale here, press the ground away. And then as you exhale, down dog. So just lift your hips up and press them back, stretch it out. Inhale, come forward to high plank. As you rock forward, see if you can come onto your tippy tippy toes and exhale, use your core strength, lift your hips, lengthen your spine, take it back. This time adding our chaturanga hold. So inhale forward, you can come to your knees if you'd like, halfway down with your exhale. Strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, press back up and exhale takes you back down dog we've got one more like that inhale high plank palakasana exhale chaturanga hold don't let your shoulders roll forward don't let your hips sink inhale press up exhale takes you back all right take an inhale into your down dog and then exhale look to the top of your mat step or hop forward fold top of your yoga mat with your in-breath, spinal extension, lengthen. Exhale, let it go. Now root into your feet. Let's take it all the way up to stand. Inhale, stretch your arms up, maybe even gaze up. Exhale, hands to heart center. 
All right. Inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, let's take our hands behind our back. Interlace your fingers. So roll your shoulders back and down. Shoulder blades hug your spine. And then see if you can start to reach your hands back away from your body. So try not to lock out your elbows. And if you want more intensity, you can even press your palms together. Choose to stay where you're at or add just a little back bend. So look up and lift your heart up. Hug in with your inner thighs. Press your hips forward. Knuckles reach down. One more in breath. Now as you exhale, keep your hands clasped, slow dive. So lead with your heart, take it all the way down. Relax your neck at the bottom. Breathe in, keep your hands clasped, spinal extension. So really squeeze your back muscles around your spine as you lengthen. Exhale, fold. Take a couple more rounds with fingers interlaced. So really work that opening in the front of your shoulders. Bend your knees a little or maybe a lot. Let your head be heavy. Let your neck relax. Take one last inhale. Exhale, hands to your low back. Release your clasp to let your arms hang. You can shake them out gently if you want. And then as you're ready, let's plant our hands. Plank pose, step back. We're gonna go into Vashistasana, side plank. Right hand is your base. Roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, left arm to the sky. If you want to modify, right knee can come down or right forearm can come down. Lift your hips high and then maybe even reach your left arm forward. So stretch through your left side. Stay here or float your left leg up. So your fullest expression. Give it everything you've got. Take one more round. We'll switch slowly to the other side. End of your exhale. Come through center, and then left hand is your base. Roll onto the baby toe edge of left foot, right arm to the sky. Feel free to modify if you want to. Right arm reaches forward. So lengthen your right side, and then maybe float your right leg up. As you float your right leg up, see if you can lift your hips even higher. So use your left side abdominals, those oblique muscles. Make sure your breath is still there. One more big deep breath. End of your exhale, plank or modified plank. Take an inhale to prepare. Exhale all the way to your belly. Ha. Baby cobra, breathe in. So lift your chest using your back strength, not your arm strength. Locust pose, float your hands up, reach your hands back. Float your feet up, reach your toes back. Stay here if you would like, option to interlace your fingers and use that leverage in your arms to perhaps lift just a little bit higher. Hug in with your inner thighs, spread your toes. Back of your neck is long, so gaze slightly down. Breathe down into your belly. Take one more great big huge breath. End of your exhale, let it go. Ha. Hands frame your mid ribs, press up to hands and knees, tabletop position. All right, friends. So let's spread our fingers nice and wide. And then right arm forward, left leg back, spinal balance. We're going to move straight into our back bend. So reach your right arm back. And then start to create a little cobra in your heart, in your chest. So look forward, lift your heart up. Now bend your left knee, left heel towards your left butt. If possible, without rounding your spine and doing this to grab your foot. So I see a lot of people do this. It's not bad, but try not to do it unless you really have to. So from here, can you grab hold of your left foot or ankle and then start to kick? Foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Hug in with your inner thighs, lift through your heart. Press down through your left fingertips and keep your left arm strong. Take two more rounds, two more big deep breaths. Nice work, my friends. Very end of your next exhale, slowly release spinal balance. So inhale, right arm forward, left leg back. 
neutral spine one time elbow to knee so curl in it should feel good round hollow out inhale re-extend lengthen and then exhale lower it down extend your right leg out to the right so like a half wide-legged straddle position I'll turn to face you so you can see so right leg out to the right toes face forward now, left arm out to the left all the way up. Big inhale here. Exhale. Thread your left arm through like you want to reach all the way over to grab your big toe with your peace fingers. And that is a bind. That is a variation. So if you want to take it, if it's in your practice, go for it. If there's another variation you'd rather take, please feel free. So go wherever you want to with this pose. About five deep breaths. Breathe into your back body. So upper back, mid back, low back. Exhale all the way to emptiness. Couple more rounds here. All right, and then if you do have your right hand lifted, bring your right palm back to the ground. Next time you inhale, unthread your left arm. So reach your left arm up as high as you can. Hold here for just a moment and see if you can even start to turn your heart to look up. Reach, 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 open, 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 then set your left hand down. All right, pick up your right foot and just extend your right leg straight back behind you. Now tuck your left toes under, three-legged down dog. So see if you can push up and back, three-legged dog pose. Make your right leg strong, your right foot active. Big, huge inhale. Now exhale, right knee, left elbow, or as close as you can come. Inhale, take it back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right armpit, or as high as you can get on your arm. Inhale, back up, three-legged dog. Now last one, knee to your nose, so scoop out your belly, then softly step your right foot through. All right, let's rise up to our crescent lunge, arms to the sky. So front knee over front ankle, high on the ball of your back foot, back leg strong and powerful. So if you look at me doing a lunge, it doesn't look like I'm in this deep, huge lunge. It looks like I'm a little bit higher, and that's okay. I've got lots of stability in my legs because I'm hugging in towards midline. So it's really easy to feel like, oh, I want to go deep. I want to get as much as I can. But can you find that balance, effort, ease, softness, strength, stability with flexibility? Let's take one more inhale here. Exhale, bring your hands to your front thigh and kind of lean forward. So we're preparing to balance. Start to bring more weight into your front foot and then lean forward. So you can kind of drag your back toes on the ground and then slowly just float your back leg up. Warrior three variation. Keep your hips square. Choose to stay here or reach your right arm forward. So right arm forward, left leg back. Choose to stay here. Or final option, we're moving into twisted dancer pose. So reach your right arm back, bend your left knee, heel towards your butt. Lift your heart. It's just like we did when we were on our hands and our knees. See if you can grab hold of your foot and then start to kick foot into hand. Pull hand back into foot. Maybe extend your left arm forward and slightly up, twisted dancer. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Let's take one more round. So wherever you're at, warrior three, twisted dancer, up to you. We're gonna end up in a low lunge with our hands on the ground. So slowly release, 
Step your left toes to the back of your mats. All right, bring your back knee down gently. We'll take half splits. So either hips can come back to rest on your back heel, leave your back toes tucked under, half screaming toe pose, or hips stay stacked over your back knee. Both variations, straighten your front leg, flex your toes, point your toes straight up, and then draw them back towards your shin. Press down through the back of your right heel. Energetically, pull your right heel back so it's like you're trying to stick your right butt cheek out behind you. You can stay a little more upright or you can work with a fold. So forehead towards your shin. Take about three to five more deep breaths. Really nice, you guys. So work the pose with each breath. Couple more. You guys are awesome. Very end of your next exhale. Let's let that go. So bring it back to your low lunge position, however you need to get there. Back knee lifts. Let's take it back to a three-legged down dog again. So right leg to the sky. This time open up your right hip. So bend your right knee. Perfect place to stay. This is a great hip opener or Option to flip it over. So right toes come down behind you. Right arm reaches forward. Lift your heart and lift your hips. Breathe down into your belly. Take one more full round if you're in the back bend. End of your exhale. Everybody regular down dog and just walk it out. Ah. Come back to your big deep breaths. Inhale, fill up. Lift your hips a little higher, push the ground away. Exhale, look forward, empty out first, then step, tiptoe or hop, forward fold. Once you have arrived, spinal extension, breathe in and lengthen. Exhale, breathe out, let it go. Root through your feet. Let's take it all the way up. Inhale, big full body stretch, reach up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms to the sky. Let's add some side body stretches. So grab left wrist with right hand, upper body over to the right, send your hips to the left. So you've got a little more weight in your left foot or even a lot more weight. Left shoulder stays plugged into the socket, so pull your left shoulder back and down. Gently tug with your right arm, breathe down into your left ribs and your left waistline one more round. Inhale, come back to center. Switch your grip, so grab your right wrist, and then as you exhale, take it to the other side, up and over. Right side body really long, create more space with your breath. Good, you guys. Right shoulder stays plugged in. See if you can press your left armpit forward just a little last round. And then as you inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, let's just take a baby back bend. So cactus your arms, lift and open through your heart. Inhale, re-extend, realign. Exhale, slow dive all the way down. With your in-breath, spinal extension, lengthen. And exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. All right, inhale at the top of your push-up. And just let it go. Exhale, chaturanga. Let's take a nice Spider-Man Cobra. Hands out wide. Lift to your fingertips. Elbows face the sky. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, twist to your right. Let your left shoulder dip. Inhale, back to center. Heart lifts, belly tones. 
Exhale, other side. So right shoulder kind of dips down. Inhale, bring it back. And exhale, let it go. Hands for a mid ribs, press up to tabletop, hands and knees. <clears throat> Spread your fingers wide, push down with your hands so your arms are strong, your shoulders are strong, your chest muscles, your pectorals are even strong. Draw your belly button in and up so you're not just dropping your belly, letting go. Take your left arm forward, right leg back this time. All right, and then moving towards our back bend, towards our half bow, left arm reaches back, lift your heart and gaze forward. Press down with your right hand. Bend your right knee, heel towards your butt. Now, if at all possible, from here, grab hold of your foot. If you need to, you can round and do that funky thing that lots of people do. Again, it's not bad, it's not, not wrong. We just wanna <clears throat> be a little more efficient if we can. So. Once you've got hold of your foot, kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, spread your toes, lift your heart, hug in with your inner thigh. So try not to let your right knee shoot out to the right. Can you feel your breath and can you breathe bigger? Take one last round, your fullest expression. So give it everything you've got. End of your exhale, slowly release, re-extend spinal balance, neutral spine, breathe in. And exhale, lower down. Ah. All right, now extend left leg out to the left, toes face forward. So like your half wide-legged straddle position. Right arm reaches out and all the way up, inhale. And as you exhale, take your right arm underneath you. Reach it through as far as possible. Come down to rest. Big deep breaths. Your pose, your expression. Just make sure you can feel your breath in your back body. Take your exhales all the way to empty. Good job, last couple of rounds, wherever you're at. And if you do happen to have your left hand lifted, bring your left palm back to the ground. Next time you inhale, unthread your right arm. So reach it up as high as you can. Reach, reach, reach. Open, open, open. Take an extra breath. And let it go. So right hand comes down. Now pick up your left foot. Swing your left leg straight back behind you. Now press down through your hands. Use your core strength. Right toes are tucked under. Three-legged down dog, left leg to the sky. So lift your right butt cheek, lengthen your spine, press down through your hands, one more inhale. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, as close as you can come. <sighs> inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left to left, as high as you can get on your left arm. Inhale, three-legged dog. And scoop out your belly, knee to your nose. Step your left foot through, low lunge. And we'll rise up to crescent lunge, arms to the sky when you're ready. So take a moment, find that balance, effort, ease, softness, strength. Not the deepest, juiciest lunge you've ever done. Just stable and strong. Back leg just as powerful as your front leg, hips square, low abdominals tone. And then can you feel your breath? Soften your face. Let's take one more inhale, perhaps even gaze up. Exhale, hands come down to your front thigh. So lean forward, prepare to balance. 
So root more into your left foot and kind of start to lean forward. So you can even kind of drag your back toes against the ground and then eventually back leg floats up. So warrior three variation, press back with your right foot, reach forward through the top of your head, hips are square. Stay here if you want or left arm goes forward. So just like our spinal balance, when we were on our hands and our knees, stay here or start to move into your twisted dancer. Left arm reaches back, heart lifts, right knee bends, heel towards your butt. Grab hold of your foot, Woo, just like we did when we were on hands and knees. Hug in with your inner thighs. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot. Maybe extend your right arm forward and slightly up as you lift higher through your heart. Squeeze your inner thighs. That's my struggle right now, that hugging towards midline. Two more rounds. Big deep breaths. Wherever you are at, just play, just explore. We'll end up in our low lunge, so slowly with control. Hands to the ground, right toes to the back of your mat. Whew, left side is so much harder for me. Back knee comes down gently. Half splits, half Hanumanasana. So your choice, hips to your back heel or hips over your back knee. Front leg straight, flex your toes, press down through your heel. And imagine you're trying to stick your left butt cheek out behind you. Stay more upright or work with your fold, forehead towards your left shin. Keep your toes flexed. Try to get the front of your left thigh, that quad muscle, to fire. So you want your quad muscle working, engaging as we stretch through the back of our thigh. Take about three more rounds. Use your exhale, so empty out, dive a little deeper. One last breath. End of your exhale, let's come back to our low lunge. Tuck your back toes and lift your back knee. Now three-legged down dog, left leg all the way back and up, stretch it out. Open your left hip, bend your left knee. Stay here if you want. Or option to flip, left foot comes down, left arm reaches forward, heart reaches forward, lift through your hips, breathe down into your belly. Let's take one more great big huge breath and then everybody take it back regular down dog. Woo. <laughs> Walk it out. All right, end of your exhale, just set your knees on the ground. Take a moment in child's pose. So hips to heels, forehead to your mats. Slow, spacious breath. All right, my friends, downward facing dog. You won't believe it, we're all ready to pigeon. We're gonna do a little more, um, some seated poses after we're done with our pigeon. So let's take, from down dog, let's take our right leg to the sky, stretch it out. And then right shin to the top of your mat for your pigeon pose. So getting into our hips. We haven't done much hip stuff yet. So pull right hip back and up. And as you pull your right hip back and slightly up, reach your heart forward. So hinge at your hips and take it all the way down. And then big deep breaths. Soften with your exhales.
Take about three more rounds. I'm gonna keep working with our right hip. So end of your exhale, just slowly lift your upper body. And nice and easy, sit over onto your right butt cheek, swing your left leg around. Take both legs out in front of you for a moment, give them a nice little shake out. And then double pigeon fire log pose, right shin on top. So left shin, I don't know which way to face that's easiest. Left shin parallel to the front edge of your mat. And then outer right ankle latches right into the inside of your knee. So not like this, not foot on the inside of your calf. Foot, outer ankle, inside of your knee. It's a completely different pose than this. All the way up here. So your right knee may be all the way up like so, and you might wanna put a block or a pillow underneath for more support. If your right knee is level with your hips, flex your toes, think of reaching your butt back and then take your heart forward. So heart reaches forward. And if you are somebody that just naturally has very open hips and you don't feel much here, Take your hands, the palms of your hands to the soles of your feet and press your hands into your feet. Press your feet back into your hands so you're working your stability. Big deep breaths down into your low back, down into your right hip, your right leg. If this is not happening for you, if you're like, there's no way I can do this pose, then take it on your back instead. Supine pigeon with your right shin, your right leg on top. About three to five more rounds. Soften your face and intentionally send your breath down into your right hip. Good job, you guys. Last round, biggest, hugest breath you can possibly take. And then if you're folded forward, either roll up or lead with your heart, reverse swan dive up. Now listen, we're gonna keep this going. So if that was like, as far as you go, stay here and maybe you can just watch or just play around. On your own, you can stay with your um, your double pigeon if you want to. Otherwise, we're going into full lotus pose, and I'll give you a place to stop in half lotus. So you want to rotate from your hip joint, not from your ankle joint, so that your knee starts to aim down and the sole of your foot just slightly spins up and you're gonna bring the sole of your foot all the way up to the crease in your hip if you can. So sole of your foot to the crease in your hip, right knee aims down. If this is as far as you can go, half lotus, perfect. Hold here, take about three breaths. Make sure you're spreading your toes so it doesn't hurt your knee. If you wanna take it further, do the same thing with your left. So try to aim your left knee down and then kind of turn the sole of your foot up, bring it up as close to the crease in your hip as you can. Full lotus. Now you can stay here or this is just for fun. This is what Iyengar taught, is full bliss. So if you can rock forward, balance on your knees, you have to engage your core and then see if you can, ooh, just for a split second. Iyengar said if you can hold this for a split second, you, achieve bliss. So see how it feels. <laughs> Yee, just have fun with it. I haven't taught this in so long. <laughs> All right. When the love is lost, as James Hardy would say, let it all go and let's just shake our legs out. Just for fun, mixing it up. Give your legs a great big shake, shake, shake. And we got to do all that on the other side now. So we're gonna meet back in down dog. You can get there however you want to. Option boat pose.
cross your ankles, rock forward, step or hop back, move through your vinyasa. And see you back in down dog. And walk it out, lengthen through your legs now. Work into your ankle joints. Find your breath again. Slow it down. Inhale, left leg to the sky. And pigeon pose, left shin forward. Body comes down gently. Left knee towards the outer left edge of your mat. Pull your left hip back, slightly up. Reach your heart forward. Bow. So even as you're bowing forward, energetically, left hip pulls slightly back, slightly up. Keep your front foot active, so spread your toes. Take about three or four more breaths. Last round, you guys. Exhale up your mouth if you want to. And then nice and easy, begin to lift your upper body. And we'll find our way into a seat. So sit over onto your left butt cheek, swing your right leg around. For a moment, both legs out in front of you. Give them a nice little shake out. And then left on top this time. So double pigeon fire log. If you would rather take it on your back, roll down, take supine pigeon instead. Otherwise, right shin parallel to the top edge of your mat. I'm not mirroring you because I can't remember. Facebook, I think, mirrors on its own. I don't think Zoom does. So... Just listen to what I say, not what I do necessarily. So right shin on top, outer ankle, inner knee. Feet flexed and active. So it shouldn't look like it looks when you're sitting in a cross-legged position. It's different. Your shin stack right on top of one another. And your foot is all the way over here. So it's not in here, over here. All right. <laughs> Sit up tall, and if your left knee is something like this, it's up, then maybe you bring a block or a pillow underneath it, and you just work on sitting up tall. If your knee is level with your hip, then reach your sit bones back, reach your butt back, reach your heart forward, and bow. If you want to, hands to the soles of your feet, and then press your palms into your feet, press your feet back into your palms, so working on your stability as you work your mobility. Big deep breaths. Notice where you're tightening, where you're tensing. Notice if you're just waiting to get out of the pose. Can you be here? Take two more breaths. Good 
good, you guys. And you can either reverse swan dive or roll up. And then just for fun, we'll play with our lotus or our half lotus on this side. So left foot comes in closer to your hip. And what automatically happens is my left knee kind of lifts. So I want to direct my left knee down and the sole of my foot kind of spins up, but I don't want to crank on my ankle. So keep your toes really active to protect your joints, your ankle and your knee. Now this may be as far as you go, half lotus, hold here and breathe for a few breaths. Otherwise, right foot comes up. Try again to direct your knee down, sole of your foot up, spread your toes, sit here, full lotus, or ooh, just for fun, I feel like I'm a gorilla or something. See if you can balance. So you'll have to tone your belly and neutralize your pelvis. That's the trick. I like to stick my butt out behind me. It just happens more naturally. Whee! So play with it. <laughs> See if you can reach your arms to the sky. I feel like this is something you do when you're a kid. So bring out your own inner child, wee! <laughs> All right, when you've had enough, let's let it go. Nobody left, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Shake it out. Good job, my friends. All right, one more pose before we go down onto our back. So now we're just gonna take a regular seated, wide-legged forward fold. So bring your legs out as wide as you can, straddle position. Toes face up, and you might even take your inner thighs, kind of spiral them down. So we want to get onto the front edge of our sit bones if possible. If you want to sit up on a blanket or a bolster or anything, feel free. So first just sit up tall, flex your toes back, and try to engage to the tops of your thighs again. So engage your quads, stretch your hamstrings. If sitting up tall is hard, you can stay here. Otherwise, heart leads, hinge at your hips and then take it forward as you fold keep pressing down through your thighs keep flexing your toes back press out through your heels again imagine you're trying to stick your butt out behind you and reach your heart forward take about three to five more very slow deep breaths See if you can dive a little deeper, fold a little further, and just take one last round. End of your exhale, slowly roll it back up. Head comes up very last. All right, and then bring your legs forward, so facing towards the top of your mat. Bring it all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees towards your chest or your belly and just find a gentle rock from side to side. Good, you guys. Feet on the ground with your knees bent. All ten toes face forward, feet hips width distance apart. So setting up for bridge. Arms by your sides, exhale in your breath. As you exhale, pull your belly button down, scoop your tailbone up. So just a little movement through your pelvis. And then inhale one vertebra at a time. Peel your spine off of your yoga mat bridge pose. If you would like, you can turn this into a full back bend, upward facing bow. You might also work your shoulders underneath you, interlace your fingers. You can play with your butt lifts and lowers like we do in my class sometimes or Jason's class if you've taken it in the past. So about five rounds wherever you've chosen, wherever, wherever you have chosen to go. Hug in with your inner thighs and reach your knees and shins forward. So it's like you're trying to lengthen the tops of your thighs, the fronts of your hips. Stay rooted through the inner edges of your feet and keep breathing down into your belly. 
Keep the back of your neck as neutral as long as possible. So press down through the back of your head, little tiny lift in your chin. Couple more rounds. If you've got your shoulders underneath, you work them out from under you. Option to reach your arms straight up towards the ceiling. Take one more inhale. As slow as you can go, one vertebra at a time. Roll down. Good. And then once your spine is back on the ground, tee out your arms or cactus your arms. Feet mat width distance apart, but keep your knees bent, keep your feet on the ground. Just windshield wiper your knees from side to side. rounds back and forth good you guys and then finish the round you're on come back to the center and let's take a deeper supine twist so draw your right knee in and extend your left leg forward set it down right arm reaches out to the right hips scoot over to the right roll onto your left side. Gaze up or over your right shoulder and you can adjust however you want to. You can take a different variation if you'd rather. About five deep breaths down into your belly. job friends end of your next exhale let's come back to center keep your left leg extended kind of scoot your hips around so they're straight down from your shoulders right knee all the way up towards your right armpit give a great big squeeze in and up half happy baby with your right leg and if it would feel good, you can even turn it into a hand to big toe pose. So maybe you extend your right leg up or out to the side. Try to keep your left leg rooted. So like there's a heavy sandbag on top of your left thigh, the back of your left shoulder, back of your left hip stay down. Take about two more rounds. And then release your right leg. Take it out next to your left leg. Maybe a full body stretches in order. Maybe you just give your legs a nice little shake out. Keep your right leg extended. Draw your left knee in. And then supine spinal twist on this side. So scoot your hips over to the left. Left arm reaches out to the left. And roll onto your right side. Breathe, gaze up or over your left shoulder. Take a couple more on this side. And then when you feel pretty even with your twist, come back to center and do the same thing. So hips straight down from your shoulders, adjust if necessary, left knee towards your left armpit, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in and up. 
and then half happy baby with your left leg. Turn it into a hand to big toe pose if you would like. Neutral spine, invisible heavy sandbag at the top of your right thigh. And then, my friends, if you do want to turn this into a full happy baby at any time, explore from there. You're welcome to. So if there are any more poses, any more stretches, any last movements that you would like to take to complete your own practice and give yourself just a moment to do so. And you guys, I am going to read. I have this quote book I made when I was like, I don't know, in high school. It's like my favorite. Um, you can't really see it on there, but I'm going to read out of here uh, during your Shavasana instructions for life from the Dalai Lama. So if you're like, I don't really care. I just want to enjoy my Shavasana, listen to my music. That is absolutely valid. So feel free to turn off your computer and just drift off. Otherwise, move into your Shavasana, settle in. And as you rest, I'm just going to share with you, um, there's 18 of them, Instructions for Life by the Dalai Lama. It says, judge your success by what you had to give up in order to get it. Remember the best relationship is one where your love for each other exceeds your need for each other. Once a year, go someplace you've never been before. Be gentle with the earth. Share your knowledge. It is a way to share your immortality. In disagreements with loved ones, deal only with the current situation. Don't bring up the past. A loving atmosphere in your home is the foundation for your life. Live a good, honorable life. Then when you get older and think back, you can enjoy it for a second time. Remember that silence is sometimes the best answer. Open your arms to change, but don't let go of your values. Spend time alone every single day. When you realize you have made a mistake, Take immediate action to fix it. Don't let a dispute injure a good friendship. Learn the rules so you know how to break them properly. Remember that not getting what you want is sometimes a wonderful stroke of luck. Follow the three R's. Respect yourself, respect others, and be responsible for your own action, actions. When you lose, don't lose the lesson. And then last but not least, take into account that great love and great achievements sometimes involve great risks. So if you would like to stay in your Shavasana for just a little longer, you are more than welcome to. 
If you would like to come back up into a seat and close your practice with me, then follow my cues. So take a great big inhale where you're at. And then exhale, let it go. <sighs> Slowly bring movement back to your body and eventually transition onto either side fetal position. Take a moment, just resting with your side body against the ground, curling into yourself, kind of nurturing yourself, mothering yourself for a moment. And then use the strength in your arms to guide yourself up into a seat. So close your eyes. If you wanna take any little movements as you settle in, just like we did at the beginning of class, maybe roll out your head, roll out your shoulders, feel free. Eventually just find stillness. Eyes closed. Exhale in your breath. One last time, sweep your arms up, big stretch from your hips all the way up to your fingertips. Just take in anything that came through for you that you want to keep with you. Bring it all into your heart, hands to heart. And thank you, my friends, so much for joining me, for letting me guide you. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.